Hi guys, we're here on Stalado Final Season 4 with uh, Victor, also known as Taz from ESC Gaming. Hi Victor. Hello guys. Hi. Hi. So, uh, first of all, Kiev Arena uh, and Stalado, how do you, in general, how do you feel about Kiev? you feel at home? Do you feel that you have a lot of people who cheer for you here? It's not your first time here and what's your, what are your general impressions about the city and the event? I mean, honestly, it feels like we've been here so many times that it almost feels like we are at home and people are always so warm and especially the staff from uh, Cyber Arena is always this... Uh, Vilat? I, not only Vilat, like everyone. Uh, we feel like we, we come in here and everyone is so nice and warm to us. We have no problems with anything and uh, in general I always have only the warm words for everyone uh, in Kiev, in Cyber Arena. We always get a great time in Kiev and uh, people in here are always so helpful and uh, yeah, it's awesome. And uh, I think that every team uh, should come here and have occasion to just experience how nice people in Cyber Arena and uh, in Kiev are. So overall, it's always a blessing. High five for that. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, okay, so um, how do you like our system that involves four days of gaming? What do you think about that? I think it's like, at, the first, at first I felt that it's like too long, but uh, on the other hand, it feels like you can really focus on your game. You can come like three or four hours before the game, eat something, because in Cyber you also can get like awesome food. So uh, yeah, this is like a sponsor, a sponsoring uh, advertisement, yeah. Uh, but uh, honestly, it's like, it's good. It's not perfect for me. I would prefer to have like eight teams, but uh, it's really nice that you can focus on one game and it's not uh, best of one, but you have best of three and you have some breaks before, uh, like between the maps. So you can get like your best game. And uh, if you are a pro gamer or you know how to prepare for a game, then you will play your best. Mm -hmm. So I'm really looking forward to next season. And uh, hopefully we'll have like, again, like four days, but maybe with some luck we'll have like two or four more teams. So, and we'll be here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so uh, if we will qualify, but yeah, I'm looking forward to next season because it's really great and four days event is like a blessing. Thank you. So let's talk about the event and the games. Um, yesterday, uh, your game versus Wizards Pro took us three maps and four overtimes to finish. That was one of the most spectacular matches in CSGO at the moment in general. Um, just a little insight about that game and like, how would you compare it to what you just had on stage right now in the finals? That was totally different. Uh, I mean, in the final, we wanted to prove that uh, yesterday games were like a bit of a fluke from us, that we didn't play to our full potential. But on the other side, it's like when we played against Virtus Pro yesterday in semifinals, it was like, not, not yesterday, but two days ago, yeah. uh, it was like um, we won the first month very, like, in a high score. Then we had a very high lead in uh, CT uh, on, on Mirage. It was, no, it was 12 to three, the first half on Mirage against uh, Virtus Pro. And then when we lo were losing rounds, like round after round after round, we were like talking to each other with uh, mistakes and we had a lot of pretension, like uh, arguments, what was wrong and stuff. And even when we were leading like 13 to seven, yeah. uh, Neo had to talk like, guys, it's not lost yet, so calm down, it's not lost. We were leading like six rounds, and we were like two rounds from draw or three rounds from winning, and we just, in CSGO, at the moment, we have problem with our mindset, because we lost so many tournaments, like mm -hmm. uh, four tournaments in a row, I think, we played very bad, mm -hmm. and we have this mindset that if we start losing, then it's very bad, and we are going to lose the whole game, so, Nordcon and this event hopefully will help us to strengthen our uh, like belief in ourselves because uh, as you could see uh, in a third map on Inferno against Virtus yeah, yeah. Pro, uh, we honestly felt it's like a lost game. And not once, but like before the overtime when it was like 15 to 12 for them. Yeah. Then in the overtime when they had the last round which we had like two on four or two on three to draw. And, uh, and Pasha one on two with uh, yeah, yeah, two bullets, yeah. headshots. So 
it felt like we were so lucky, but on the other side, I hope that uh, it will help us because we managed to like calm down the game in overtime and just play the play a lot better. We started to think what the opponent is doing and not what we are doing wrong. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm looking forward to next events and hopefully we'll be even stronger. Thank you. Um, by the way, um, you think that we just brought the, the same stuff they did like uh, during your last match uh, in the finals? You just talked about like that you read the opponent's play and you were more focused on what the opponent's doing instead of what your team is doing. So like in, in that term, uh, the finals, the, were they doing something really uh, expectable from you? Uh, I mean, we pretty much were like watching the demos. We were talking, during this event, we were talking a lot about the Counter-Strike, about our game, about uh, what we are doing wrong in our uh, apartment. and. During this game, we were just prepared for uh, what Virtus Pro can do, and uh, what they were doing, and what they can do. So we basically were like trying to cover every road, every like, every possible way they can go, and they did some nice plays. But uh, it was more it was more of a skill plays than tactic uh, tactic wise because we pretty much knew what they are going to do maybe not in a piece around on ct when yeah, yeah. we went like three guys on b and we were thinking that okay we fake the ramp rush and they will go and go b side but it didn't work out so kudos to them and i think that they are on a very good way to become a contender because they have so strong lineup like in a aim wise skill wise uh, you, it's like getting the best teams from uh, all over Russia, from all over uh, Ukraine and Kazakhstan, of course. But it's like, it's like the beast, beast from the east, in my opinion. And uh, we are really lucky that we are able to win in a, such a fashion. Thank you. Um, okay, so coming more to uh, yourself and your team. Um, Please tell, if, uh, tell us a few words, how do you practice? Like yourself, uh, how do you practice your personal skill? And uh, what's the schedule for the bootcamp of ESC Gaming before the, before the Stellar? Well, we didn't have the chance uh, to bootcamp before this event. So uh, after, I think, like DreamHack, I had this small video blog in which I was like really mad at uh, myself and my team mm -hmm. and how we performed and people who are like cheering for us were disappointed. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we were also lucky that we uh, got this, uh, I, I, I was lucky because I got the computer from ESC like three weeks ago. And before that I was playing on the different uh, setup and it wasn't really fun for me to play CSGO. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is the biggest problem at the moment for CSGO. Uh, it's not like CS 1.6 was the best. No, people cannot play CSGO to it's like at least medium potential because it's not fun to play when your mass is lagging or your game is uh, fluffy and not really, you're not enjoying your headshots or your moves. Yeah. So with time when people will buy some computers and buy more better stuff in their computers then the game will get more viewers get more uh, interest from fans because i know that many fans are like age from uh, 12 to uh, 18 yeah, something yeah, like that most anyway. of the fans and uh, it's not easy for them to get money for a new computer and it's not easy for them to get from uh, one game to another uh, in their level and uh, with their love, because when you are young and you even first your first love, uh, when you love some woman, and uh, it's very hard for you to in future to get the same feeling Thank as you. first love. So I think that with time, maybe we'll have some luck, and people will start to love CS:GO uh, when they see uh, that we are loving it. That it's awesome game, and Valve is trying to re evolve the game. But as for as for my my personal training. For three weeks after my video blog, I was like sitting at my home at least six or seven hours a day and playing aim maps like most of it and then death matches. So I was like all the time playing and I always seen like Freeberg or Get Right or Exist. I was like always seeing them on this death match and uh, or aim maps. So I knew that I need to play even more. So for like three weeks for me, it was like boot camping all the time and I think that we really and my guys also were like playing a lot we had this discussion because in our team we had 
after four games, we wanted to change the lineup. We had uh, so many problems that we started to talk with each other. We had this one hour or two hours long talk uh, with a lot of arguments and bad words to each other. And then after this talk, we suddenly started to behave normally. We started to respect each other and we came back to the point where we were really like normal people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, yes, friends. And I can honestly say that at the moment it feels like we are friends, that I can talk with every guy and we, have, we can find a common language. So this was our problem. And I feel like at the moment we are like going straight forward, like straight up with our... Uh, performance with our uh, skill because we started to treat each other with respect and we try to help each other and uh, like even when you see our games now we go high fives low fives it's not high fives it's low fives yeah. we go low fives all the time and we try to cheer for each other if someone yeah, yeah, has yeah. two nice skill like headshots then yeah you're awesome man you 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 are the boss and yeah. everyone's like on the same level you are not f trying to find a star or a guy, but if someone plays a good tournament, everyone is like, yeah, man, you really played awesome. So we are boosting our confidence. Uh, each other is boosting the confidence. So it's, it feels really well, great to play in this team at the moment. Um, obviously, it's not really fair to compare uh, like skill levels of the players and their, their performances, because you're a team. But, uh, well, you had an uh, awesome performance in this LAN, and like, uh, Pasha picked up on game really well. Yeah. Uh, like, do you think, um, do you think that uh, other players like Neo, who plays mostly, like, first question is, why uh, is Neo playing more uh, AVP than Pasha at the moment? And um, the second question is, um, do you think that, like, uh, Kuban and Neo will will like pick up and uh, came to the same level, or is is it just a day thing? Like one day they play good. First of all, about Neo and AVP, it feels like he's just picking the AVP because he thinks that it's needed, and that he he knows that when he got AVP on certain spots, it's yeah. better for him yeah. because he can do more. And for Pasha, at the moment, it's more like he he got like he has the spots. Uh, which are not that good for AVP uh -huh. in our team, yeah, a CT yeah, or terrorist, and he prefers to go with uh, other weapons. So we are really lucky. He does really good yes, with them. Yes, and he does great with them. And I think that Neo is like, with Neo at the moment, it's not that he's playing bad or medium. No, it's, no, it's, it's that people expect from him to do some crazy shit, like Matrix. Magics. Matrix. Yeah, Matrix. <laughs> they expect from him that he, after like two months of playing, mm -hmm he will be like the final boss of Counter-Strike CSGO. And even when we started to play Counter-Strike, uh, before 1.6, 1.5, 1.3, 1 Neo was like playing a lot, like practicing. He was always, uh, uh, he always had a bright future, but he needs some time. He, he, I've, I'm sure that he will come to the point when he will start to dominate everyone. I just hope that it will be the point when our team will be also dominant and he will not be like the one person to get it all, like yeah. to get everyone on uh, his hands and carry us. Carry I just hope that we will be able to keep up with uh, our performance, keep up with him, and we'll start like to beat N NIP in the future. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm really sure that if Neo picks up uh, to his like potential level, then it will be a re real shot for us to beat NIP. And I never, I will never say that Cuban is like playing bad. He just has this. Uh, we we also talked about it yesterday that he got this very good aim on this distance, like medium and uh, high distance. But when it comes to short range, yeah. he always had a lot of problems. Yeah. And I think he will just practice on it. He, he it's not going to be hard. He he knows uh, what he needs to do. We are talking also that uh, everyone needs to start playing that match. Needs to start playing really a lot of this game. And I'm sure that he will get to the level where he wants to be. But uh, we also need to remember that he's an in-game leader, yeah, so it's yeah. not so easy for him. He gets a lot of pressure on him, and it's not only him who gets the pressure. We also like drawing a lot of pressure on him and saying him that man, just give us a tactic, what to yeah, play, and yeah, yeah. he needs to decide and. It's not that easy because I was leading, so I know that it's not that easy. And uh, 
I'm very happy. I'm very happy that Lord picked up and uh, he started to play very well. And even on this tournament, I, I don't think that anyone was this spectac spectacular star. Yeah. It felt like the whole team was doing what they need to what do, need and uh, it felt awesome. I, I I don't really have to like kill everyone. I don't really want Neo to carry our team. I just hope that uh, we can play every like dominate our games with uh, every player playing on his level. Thank you. So, um, probably if you'll pick up on your level, you'll be the first team to actually beat an IP. Hopefully. Hopefully. And um, what, can you name some other teams that actually have a chance at the current stage of the game in CSGO to beat an IP? I think that I'm amazed with the uh, curse from Finland, yeah. not to and the, the uh, not to old old school old yeah, boy. Yeah. Uh, I'm amazed that they, they were playing really close with IP. So of course they have some chances. Uh, I think that very games after bootcamp they will be also very strong, uh, mm. stronger than now. Uh, I really like the Slovakian team with Guardian, Oscar, yeah, and uh, I feel that maybe they can uh, show, uh, also show some power. Uh, I'm forgetting about some teams, but uh, we're just pro. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I said it earlier, I feel yeah, that yeah. Virtus just needs to stay on their heels and they need to they practice. The they need to practice a lot. They can't think that second place is good. Never think about second place is good. What do you think is the weakest point of Virtus Pro right now? I think that's... Like team play or it's like... more of lack of uh, tactics, like this crazy source tactics. Mm -hmm. They need some, some more. At the moment, they are really uh, aiming on the skill. Mm -hmm. the, they are like more based on skill than uh, on tactics. Okay. And for me, I, I felt great when I knew that I'm going to play against Virtus because I prefer to have this skill uh, games mm -hmm. than, uh, than when I need to run from smokes and flashes because it's easier for mm -hmm. me because I'm always very confident. Mm -hmm. And I feel that Pasha or Neo uh, also feel the same way. And Lord and Cuban will always do some tricks to use uh, people who are running without nades. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, we will see you on next tour ladder. I'm pretty sure of that Hopefully. right now. Hopefully, Hopefully again, but I'm pretty sure that we need to qualify still. Uh, maybe when we'll see Nip on LAN on next tour ladder. And uh, to see like you versus Nip on our stage, that would be the best thing that happens to CSGO, I think, in a, in a while. Um, so, uh, closing up, you're giving up, uh, like, do you have some shout outs you want to give to your friends, to your fans, to your organization, and uh, to your teammates? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, to my teammates, I don't have to say anything, they know everything. Yeah. But uh, a lot of, sh like, great shout outs to ESC Gaming, and especially to Rolf Placzka, who is our uh, main uh, organizer, mm -hmm. and he's, like, believing in us always, with us in tournaments, and... Okay. Yeah, he's very like supporting and believes in us. He, he's, he's living the game mm -hmm. with us. So this is like awesome, and I hope that it will still this, stay this way. Uh, I would also want to uh, thank our sponsors, Icybox and uh, BenQ and QPad. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, of, of course I would like to thank our fans uh, from all over the world. Yeah. I don't care if you guys uh, hate uh, Polish fans and always have these fights. <laughs> But uh, I really love the Polish fans and uh, everyone else because even when you write bad things or good things, it works in the right direction because we have conversation, we have this uh, living the game and uh, loving the game. So hopefully we'll just become a bigger community and uh, we'll just be bigger than League of Legends. So <laughs> League of Legends, yes. we're coming. I'm, I'm com counting on you people. <laughs> Okay, loving the game, loving CSGO, thank you, and thank you have much. a good time in Kiev. Главный технологический партнер корпорация Intel, генеральный партнер компании Asus, игровой центр Киев Киберспорт Арена.